Bienvenue tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. Now, in this edition, we take you to Mongolia, a land well known for its nomad culture and its sweeping plains called steppes. But that is changing at an alarming rate, and with it, there are some shocking social and geological changes. Our reporter Angelique Forger joins us now to tell us more. Uh, Angelique, before we take a look at your report, um, tell us a bit more about the, the climate issues that Mongolia faces, which I understand are completely tied in with the sort of changes we're talking about. I understand you've been filming in temperatures around about minus 40 Celsius. Yes, Mark, and what I can say is that is very hard to work in uh, such conditions, but it's hard too for nomad herders in the steppe. But what's even harder for them is that those pastures, they have been losing more and more animals because of climate change. Over the past 70 years, the average temperature in Mongolia has risen by more than two degrees, more than double the average global increase. And this has made more frequent and more intense uh, weather phenomenon known in Mongolia as the Zud, when scorching summers are followed by harsher winters. It stops the grass from growing, then animals lack of food and can't survive. Angelique, we'll listen for that word, Zerd. Angelique, thank you very much indeed. We'll have more, of course, from Angelique after we take a look at the report that she's done with Antoine Vidier and Thomas Blanc. Our life today isn't the one we dreamt of. We thought that in the city everything would be easier, that finding a job would be easier. But that isn't the case. My husband does odd jobs. That's how we make ends meet. Our income isn't stable, and everything here is so expensive. Altansit Seg. Her husband and her daughters all used to be nomads. Three years ago, they left the steppes, lured by the idea of a better life in Ulaanbaatar. But they're lacking everything here, money, food and space. Altan Tzitzeg would love to go back, but this is impossible. We sold all our animals, so going back to the steppes would be really difficult. Actually, we don't have a future there at all. Just like Altanteteg and her family, millions of nomads have abandoned the vast grasslands to start a new life in the capital. But they're running out of space. Ulaanbaatar is overpopulated and unable to deal with the influx of migrants from the countryside. The city is now home to half of the country's population, more than it can handle. Packed with people, the city is also suffocating in the smog created by coal-fired stoves, mostly found in the yurt-filled neighborhoods that over time have become sprawling slums. Why are these families leaving the steppes? How are they adapting to a new sedentary lifestyle? What does the future have in store? for Mongolia's nomads. To understand this massive rural exodus, it's important to meet Mongolia's last herders. 400 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar, Hurlbatar is preparing his flock for winter. It's on this plateau, at an altitude of 2,000 meters, that his animals will spend the coldest part of the year. And it's already minus 40 degrees Celsius. I hope it's going to be okay. I really hope we're going to make it. If the weather is bad, we'll feel the consequences come spring. Khurul Batar is worried because weather conditions these past few winters have been extreme. Part of his flock didn't survive. Last year, before winter, I had 900 goats and sheep like these ones. But today, look, because of Zod, I only have 400. 
Zud is every nomad's worst nightmare. A glacial winter following a very dry summer. The ground freezes, stopping the grass from growing. Animals then lack food and are too weak to survive. Last year, Zud killed 700,000 animals, a disaster for herders. <laughs> The animals are the only source of income for us nomads. So if we lose our animals, our income plummets, and this has an effect on our way of life. Zud is a huge challenge for us nomadic herders. This weather phenomenon isn't new, but in the past few years it's become more frequent and more intense. Meaning that in the past 20 years, hundreds of thousands of herders have left the steppes. A massive rural exodus that Ulaanbaatar is unable to cope with. Its population of a million and a half is three times its capacity. Migrants have to deal with poverty as well as water and electricity shortages. So to keep warm, they burn coal. Altan Tsetseg and her family burn through 300 kilos per month. At night you have to get up twice to fill the stove. And during the day you have to do it every five or six hours. Anyone who lives in a yurt knows it's impossible to live without coal. Sometimes temperatures can go under minus 40 degrees Celsius. Three times a week, she stocks up at the market. Hi. How much is the bag of coal today? Hey, how much is the bag of coal today? It's 120. And wood? And wood? Wood is one euro. Okay, so I'll take one bag of coal and another of wood. Okay, where do you want me to put them? Every day I go through one bag of coal and one bag of wood. In total, she spends 35 euro a month to keep warm, a third of the household's income. I know I can use electric heating. It's one way of doing it, but it's far too expensive for me. I can't afford it. <laughs> In Ulaanbaatar, all the former nomads do the same. In the yurt neighborhoods, there are 200,000 families and as many chimneys. So in winter, breathing is hard. The air is more polluted than in Beijing or New Delhi. Fine particle levels can reach 130 times the maximum level recommended by the WHO. The consequences for Ulaanbaatar's children are dramatic. In the city's hospitals, pediatric departments are overwhelmed. Respiratory diseases are the first cause of mortality in children under five in Mongolia. Does he still have trouble breathing, especially at night? No, during the day as well. Naran Batar is six months old, and he's been in hospital for a week with pneumonia. Is your neighborhood very polluted? What are you doing to help your child breathe? When I go out, I try and cover him up with scarves. OK, but the air is still polluted. It's very hard to see one of my children fall sick. Even I sometimes get throat aches and I'll cough for several days. So seeing my son sick like this and seeing him suffer without being able to do anything, it really pains me. The number of sick children in Ulaanbaatar has increased so much that, in a year, they had to double the number of beds in the department. The children who come here have breathing problems, their respiratory organs are very damaged, they're out of breath and there isn't enough oxygen in their brains. So when they fall ill, it's very difficult to treat them because they quickly have complications. To protect the children, the government has taken a radical and unprecedented step. This winter, 
all the schools in Ulaanbaatar will close their doors for longer than usual. The students here are taking their last classes before the holidays. The children in primary school, middle school and high school will be on holiday by mid-December and until February 10th. It's the first time that holidays will be this long, almost two months. Usually it's two weeks. The decision was taken to protect them so that they don't leave the house and breathe in bad air. All of the 38 students in this class say the pollution affects them on their way to school. It hurts my throat and it makes me want to throw up. When you walk and you feel the pollution, you feel bad, you get nauseous and your head starts spinning. So when you leave the house, you really have to wear a mask. Authorities in Mongolia are not able to reduce pollution. So they call on NGOs like UNICEF for help. One of their projects is designing yurts with better insulation so that they need less coal to keep warm, leading to less pollution. Leading this project is Jeremiah Mushosho from Zimbabwe. As you can see, we have six years, but one has been left as a standard gear so that we can compare the, the performance of the gear. On this property 40 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar, every yurt is testing a specific innovation. So a standard gear, uh, the door looks like this one, just like this. As you can see, it's a plain door, right, without anything. But what we've done now, we have uh, put uh, this uh, insulating material and the curtain as well to prevent heat from uh, escaping. Inside, a device measures temperature, humidity, and carbon monoxide levels. Jeremiah Mushosho is full of praise for a project that preserves Mongolia's traditional habitat. We may need to add uh, kind of adjust and modify other things, but we've really tried to maintain uh, the traditional approach. For example, the way the door is, is facing, it is a standard. And also we're maintaining the shape and the kind of material that they are using because it is important for their identity as a community. Preserving traditions as sedentary lifestyles are replacing nomadic culture. 15 years ago, herders represented half of Mongolia's population. Today, only 30% still live on the steppes, where Hural Batar wants to believe that he'll still look after his flock for a very long time. His wife and him are worried about the many nomads leaving around them. When herders leave everything behind to go to the city, lose all their animals, it means we're losing our culture and traditions. It's actually already happening, and if weather conditions don't improve, the situation will only get worse. Even their daughters have abandoned the nomadic way of life. Look, that's me in this photograph. That's my husband, our two daughters. Yes, the older one is Sarul, and the younger one is Sarango. They both graduated from university. Now they live in the city, just like most of their family members. Him, my older brother, and her, my sister, both moved to the city, as well as my little brother. And this couple left too. Actually, on the steps today, there's only this family and us left. Last year, to slow this exodus down, the Mongolian government banned migration from the countryside to the city. But will this really stop the last nomads from leaving the grasslands? Hurul Batar and his wife, on their part, are too busy facing another harsh winter. Let's rejoin our reporter, Angelique Forger, who's uh, awaited us. Angelique, thank you so much for your report. It was fascinating and alarming at the same time. Um, I wonder how Mongolia really is trying to cope with this mass exodus from the steppes. Tell us more about that. 
Well, the Mongolian government is overwhelmed by the situation. As we have seen in the report, the, uh, the government has banned migration from the countryside to the city last year, and they have recently announced that uh, it will be extended until 2020. But high levels of uh, pollution in Ulaanbaatar persist, and many say that this is migration bans are not enough to reduce uh, pollution. One of the solutions would be to improve the quality of life in the countryside, to develop rural areas, actually, to make life good so people stay. The slums, the pollution, uh, Mongolia's authorities seem to be almost... I don't mean to be disparaging, but almost powerless in trying to deal with this. Well, that's exactly what a pressure group known in Mongolia as Mums and Dads Against Smog say. They organized those past months and past years different protests in Ulaanbaatar to urge the government to do more, but they were ignored. Uh, Purevkud Serender, who is one of the co-founders of the group, now says that she is disillusioned. The pollution reduction program was launched two winters ago, but nothing has changed. The quality of the air is 5, 50 and at times even 100 times higher than the levels recommended by the World Health Organization. Everything is exactly the same. You can still feel the same polluted air. Sometimes you don't even see vehicles that are just several meters away from you. Everything is the same as before. Nothing has changed. It's amazing what she's describing sounds like London back in the 1940s or something like that, before things like the Clean Air Act clean things up. And clearly this is what is needed in Mongolia in some way, shape or form, some way of, of making things better. Uh, well, what you've been reporting on is, is really a, a way of living which seems to be dying out completely. When you, you go and do that, of course, that's vital, Angelique, but it must leave you with a real sense of sadness when you see it. Well, exactly. I was struck by deep sadness, first to see how much we human beings can hurt the planet. Because, you know, when we were walking in Ulaanbaatar, it was awful. I really smelt the pollution. I'm a foreign correspondent. I've been living in China for three years now, so I am quite used to pollution from my window. I can see it every day. Sometimes I can smell it. But there, in Ulaanbaatar, I smelt it like never before. And what was even more shocking was to realize that Mongolian people are stuck in there. You know, I only stayed a week uh, for this report, so for me it was okay because I knew that I was, uh, that I would leave. But for them, it's a nightmare seeing those children in the hospitals having respiratory infections is heartbreaking for me and for their parents. And every Mongolian we've talked to um, seemed hopeless and sad. The wealthiest uh, we met were uh, plan planning to move abroad. Uh, so for them, it was okay. But the poorest have no other option than to stay. Indeed, and it's always the poor that pay. Angelique, thank you very much indeed. And thank you to your team for putting together that fascinating and uh, fundamentally very sad report in terms of what's happening to Mongolia. You can, of course, can see it again via our website, francefancat.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us.